Hey, I shouldn't be telling you this, but if you skip this part of the video, you will miss out on the deal of a lifetime. If you click the link in the description, you will see that Atlas VPN are giving out an offer to get a three year subscription for just $1.83 per month. That's less than Netflix's latest price increase. Plus, it comes with three months for free and a 30 day money back guarantee. It's the best VPN on the market and you can use it to watch shows that are not available on streaming services in your country. So you can watch Friends on UK Netflix no matter where you are in the world, as long as you have a subscription to Netflix. You can even use it on unlimited devices. So everyone in your house can watch Friends on UK Netflix at once. And they keep your searches private so that we'll all finally stop spying on you. But remember, time is of the essence if you want to get this offer. Just $1.83 per month to get a three year subscription by clicking the link in the description below. I forgot to congratulate my girlfriend for getting into a college. I was on call with her when she said that she got in the college. I directly went past the congratulations stage and told her the next steps like accepting the offer, booking the medical, etc. I have already been through this so I was just telling her what to do. She's in India, I'm in Canada. I messed up really bad and she's pissed at me. From Pav I told her what to do because I didn't want any delays in her process and from her Pav I made her feel that I'm uninterested. She said, it's the small things that matter, so it's not okay, and she says that my words and actions don't align. Any advice on how to cool this situation down? Buy her a thoughtful gift and apologize. Tell her you're super proud of her, you spaced out, and you want to properly celebrate as soon as you can. Send her some flowers in the college colors. Let's be real here. You screwed up. It seems like you're more of a task-oriented, goals, check it off a list type of person. I get that. My sister is one. Came in handy during more than one natural disaster or family dysfunction moment. However, she got into college flowers so many flowers i 25m don't want my girlfriend 24f to bring her friend 25m over my girlfriend and i met in university and has been dating for five years now she moved into my place a few months ago we never had any trouble until she said she wants her friend to come over to hang out her best friend has a large, aggressive Rottweiler that he always take with him everywhere and I don't want that anywhere near my cat. My girlfriend accused me of being jealous so I told her that she can go over to hang out with him at his place but she is still pretty upset about it. She said I'm worrying too much about it but I don't think I am. I've seen that dog running after stray cats before and know he can easily hurt my cat. He wouldn't leave it at home when he comes over either since he said he takes it with him wherever he goes. What do I do? Update. A few hours ago I confronted my girlfriend about this, telling her that she has ignored my concerns regarding my cat's safety and prioritized her friend over that. She was really angry and said I was being overprotective, despite having seen the way the guy's Rottweiler acts with cats before. I have broken up with her and gotten the key back. She's moved out now. I am with the other responder. I have dogs I am extremely attached to but I don't assume that I can or should take them to other people's houses. Asking not to bring the dog over is totally reasonable. If she doesn't accept that then her and her friend are being unreasonable. Also, like, why couldn't you guys just meet at a restaurant or something? Couldn't he just come over without the dog? What fucking psycho brings a Roddy to strange places all the time? The instant accusation of being jealous at a very reasonable request is a bit alarming to be honest. You've also got to come to terms with the fact that she's willing to put your cat's life at risk for seemingly no reason. Is this who you want to be in a relationship with as a pet owner? Hughie red flag. I don't have a cat but that blatant disregard for its life would shake the foundations of the relationship. 8 months pregnant and struggling over boyfriend's actions. Didn't get much responses in other subs so I'm posting here. Please no harsh comments as I'm already struggling with this enough. Long story boyfriend of 5 years had oral sex. They both performed it on each other while I was four months pregnant with his best friend of seven years who was at our gender reveal. They hooked up a month after the reveal. A week after their first hookup, they cuddled in a club and he went back to her house and he fingered her, cuddled her. All while I was home. I found out in September, three months after the act, after having an intuition something was wrong and saw their Instagram DMS from back in June speaking of the incident. I was so hurt and he did the whole crying, kissing my feet and begging act. He cut all contact with her and blocked her. 
We broke up for two weeks and I kicked him out. We reconciled for our family and he moved back in after the time apart. He gave me full access to his phone, plus shares his location, and socials but I found myself going crazy playing detective every week looking through his stuff. This far along, I feel so alone. I don't have parents and my friends all moved away. I'm laying in bed wondering why does everyone who say they love me wind up hurting me. This is not how I pictured living the last month of my pregnancy. I'm having nightmares about the girl and him. He claimed he was drunk but after a long talk last night, I realized that although they were physically messing around when drunk, they did twice a week apart. The flirty messages reflecting on their sessions, and him still choosing to go out to the club with her were all a sober month's actions. He knew what he was doing and still kept going. It's so hard to believe knowing that he had plenty of times to stop. I was so sick during my pregnancy. It doesn't help that I found out by looking through his phone three months after the incident, not him confessing. They were in contact the day before I found out talking about a group trip and were a bit flirtatious. She was even going to come to our baby shower but I found out right before. I told him three days ago that I don't know if I can live like this and may need space to have some sense of peace the remainder of my pregnancy. But after a night of aches and pain due to my pregnant belly, he came to help me fall asleep and we slept in the same bed again, he was on the couch. Every kiss, every cuddle, every word we share, I cringe because he shared that with her. It just doesn't feel the same anymore. I restated yesterday that I couldn't do this anymore and asked him to leave once again in peace, no puppy dog eyes or begging, if he truly cares about me and his son. Of course, he was panicking, stalling, crying and telling me how much he doesn't want to live without me but I stayed firm and he left last night. He's currently in therapy, double A and reading a lot of self-help books. He is remorseful, but again, I don't know how I will ever get over this. I want him but don't feel much peace with him cause I keep being reminded of how awful he did me. My heart is shattered, I'm currently in therapy as well. I can't believe he blindsided me this bad. I still love him though but this feeling is insufferable. I kicked him out again last night cause I just couldn't take seeing him every day and pretending everything is fine. I see his efforts but I want to live in peace the rest of my pregnancy and focus on my son coming in November. Complete no contact is impossible. I guess I could until I go into labor. I'm supposed to be happy during this time and it's turned into another traumatic event in my life. Crying. Any advice? Oh and don't feel obligated to have him at the birth if it is going to stress you out. Having a baby is a tough job and you need to be surrounded by those who make your job easier and not harder. He'll be back screwing her while you are in postpartum. They have a longer relationship and will continue seeing each other. The waterworks are for show to make him feel like a victim and because he got caught. Have a postpartum plan in place. Have a child support and co-parent agreement ready for him. That should be the only way you can remain in contact and meet. You can go NC for the remainder of your pregnancy to get peace and quiet and get used to living without him. You most likely can't trust him again. This wasn't a one-time mistake. Don't stay in a relationship, for the kid. Surround yourself with people who love and support you. Am I weird for not wanting to be in a relationship no matter how much I love the other person? So I'm going through a breakup. My, 38 male, ex-girlfriend, 38 female. And I pretty much decided that our relationship wasn't working and both of us had needs that weren't getting met so we mutually and amicably decided to break up. Then the weirdest thing happened. My depression that had been plaguing me for years just went away. It was as if a huge weight had been lifted off of my shoulders and I could breathe for the first time in the five years that we had been together. Here's the thing. My ex is wonderful. She's beautiful, smart, great in bed and an all-around great person and I love her. I think I'm realizing for the first time in my life that I need as close as possible to absolute freedom to be happy. It's like as soon as I feel tied down I start to get depressed and then life becomes really hard. I'm happy for the first time in five years and I'm wondering if anyone else out there can relate. Is this common and I'm just unaware? Is there a Reddit group for this? I do feel a bit foolish for not realizing this sooner I just couldn't figure out why I was so sad when I had such a wonderful partner but now I think I know. It was because having a partner makes me enjoy life less no matter how wonderful they are. What about being in a relationship makes you fell, tied down? Is it monogamy? Expectations your partner may have? Commitment? It's okay to prefer to be single. There is not one life script that everybody has to follow. 
That said, it's also possible that you get depressed in relationships because of some systemic psychological trauma or issues that you could work past. Did a parent abandon or abuse you? Did you have a really traumatic relationship in your past? Maybe you think you've healed and moved but really haven't, and the anxiety, pain, etc. is haunting you and making it difficult for you to navigate and enjoy good romantic relationships. Solution. Talk to a therapist.